Good morning, Church, and welcome to UECP English Worship Service. This month, we are celebrating the Missions Month, and our theme for this year is Doors of Opportunity. This is God's sanctuary. Let us enter with reverence, meditate in quietness, and worship in prayer and praise. Our worship as a congregation begins with a prelude, and may this moment be a time of quiet and inner preparation for the outward act of worship. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are gathered here to worship God, to commune with Him who is not far away from us. In Him we live and have our being. Let us therefore direct our hearts to Him with earnest seeking, and if there is any right, not right in our desires and affections, which would hinder the indwelling of His Holy Spirit, let us acknowledge it. To him who searches the heart, for he knows us all together. Come, let us stand and sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Can we all stand as we prepare for worship? Today, we are given another opportunity to worship our God who loves us. And in this love, we are enabled and empowered to love others as He has loved us. With this in mind and in our hearts, 
Let's all praise Him together in song.
Yes, Lord, teach us to go beyond the borders of our hearts to reach the world. Our dear Heavenly Father, the God who desires all people to be saved, we praise you because your salvation plan never changes. From the time of creation to the time you made your covenant with Abraham, until the time Jesus incarnated and died for our sins, your redemption plan remained the same, that it is by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ. Truly, your grace goes beyond our imagination. And Lord, we thank you for that. As we come to the last Sunday of Mission Swant, we ask that you will open our eyes so that we may see the many unsaved people around us, those who are lost, those who are in need of a Savior. So, Lord, we pray that you will touch our hearts so that we will be reminded once again that sharing the gospel and making disciples are not options that you have given us, but instead your commands. Not only that, you also commanded us to love one another. Oh Lord, soften our calloused hearts and move us to take up the challenge to fully obey you in doing all of these things. Teach us, Lord, to also give generously to our missions fund so that the work for your kingdom will be well supplied and so that we may live as good stewards of your blessings. O oh Lord, we will have a new administration soon. And so we lift up our new president and the other elected leaders before you. We pray that you give them a heart that fears you, for we have learned from your word that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We pray that you will keep all incoming leaders away, Lord, from the temptation of bribes and corruption. O Lord, grant them a servant's heart to love their country more than themselves so that they may really serve the people. O Lord, we continue to pray for our country. We pray for the Filipino people as the gas prices continue to rise up. We pray that you will provide for their basic needs, especially for those who are living below the poverty line. May you use this opportunity to show them that you are the God who provides. Finally, Lord, as COVID cases slowly increases once again, we pray that you will continue to heal our land. While our economy is still trying to recover, we pray that you will bless the businesses of your children and may you provide jobs for your people. As this pandemic continues to ravage our country, oh Lord, we will continue to trust in you. Be merciful to us, your people. And now, as we gather today, quiet our hearts as we listen to your word and worship you. May you use your servant to give to us your word. And may you send your spirit to open our hearts and our ears so that we will not only hear, but we will also obey. O people of God, let us together pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. You may take your seats.
We are blessed today with a guest speaker, Reverend Bernard Henson. And I would like to introduce to you our guest speaker this morning. Reverend Henson is the National Director of Evangelism Explosion Philippines for 39 long years. The ministry is fondly called EE, and UECP is actually the first church in the Philippines that used EE to train believers how to share the gospel to friends and loved ones. Reverend Henson is married to Dr. Raquel Rivera for 42 years, and they are blessed with two sons, namely Carl and Matthew, and both are medical doctors. That means they are the frontliners. So brothers and sisters in Christ, please welcome Reverend Bernard Henson. Good morning. I'm so glad to be back at the UECP and uh, worship with you today. Uh, thank you, Deacon Ponson, for the kind introduction. Our text today is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 6 to 34. However, because the passage is rather long, we will uh, limit the reading to just verse 9 of Acts 16. Let me just say that uh, I am not Bishop F. Tindero, as was previously announced to be your speaker today. He went to the United States uh, a week ago or so, and he got infected with COVID. And so he called me up and said if I can pitch in for him because he was hesitant and uh, uh, not sure if he, the airline would fly him back to Manila, but the Lord is good. He got healed. He's back in the Philippines. Anyway, Bishop Pindero is a classmate at the seminary and also the chairman of the board of Evangelism Explosion Philippines that I, uh, that I, have, I am privileged to serve and work with, as mentioned, for many years. UECP is a part of our history because the very first implementation of EE in the country was held at UECP after Dr. Joseph Xiao came back from Texas and uh, was certified as a trainer with EE in a leadership clinic. And uh, through the years, I have been coming back. You have hosted leadership clinics. Uh, I'm happy to see the Reverend Brian here, one of my students when he was, I think, 12 years old. <laughs> but now he is a father to three children. Anyway, going to the Word of God, the title of today's message is The Unrestricted Gospel. Unrestricted Gospel. Now, according to Oxford Languages, the word of the year for 2020, that was almost two years ago, is the word lockdown. The world was in lockdown, and uh, in some parts of the world, it still is. But in spite of this, it was reported that Global Outreach Days 2020 mobilized over 57 million Christians worldwide to reach 277 million with the gospel of salvation. Now, despite social distancing, due to COVID-19, Christians share the gospel digitally, by phone, by text, and through food and mask distributions. 
with Bible and tracts as personal evangelism. The gospel can be restricted by any pandemic or crisis, but it is the power of God unto salvation. And let me share with you from our passage today some of the lessons that we learn on how the gospel should proceed. Let's commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Father, we are so grateful to you that we can already worship you, though we can do that at home, but now we have the face-to-face -face situation where for over two years we long for fellowshipping and worshiping together with one another. Thank you for your people at this church. We are waiting for you. Speak to us. Bless us for your glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Acts 16 is the account of the second missionary journey of Apostle Paul and Silas that provides us powerful lessons in reaching our community and the lost with the gospel. This is actually popularly known as the Macedonian call. But what is the Macedonian call? The, Mac Ma the Macedonian call, first of all, was revealed through a vision which is mentioned in verse 9. Verse 9 says, come over and help us. And then the following verse, verse 10, reveals that immediately after Paul had seen the vision, he and his companions left for Macedonia. They concluded that God had called them to preach the gospel to them. So in short, the Macedonian call is simply a call for help. A call for help. Verse 10 says, and we got ready to leave. Now what kind of help was being needed? It was a help or a call for help in the proclamation of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, I repeat, reaching the lost, reaching our communities with the gospel requires a few things. And this morning, let me discuss with you just three simple things as we study the word. Number one is teamwork. Teamwork. Verse 10b says, concluding that God has called us or had called us to preach the gospel to them. You know, they, they huddled, they talked, they prayed, and then after that, they said, <clears throat> clearly, it is the Lord that's calling us. You see, the last sentence of verse 10 emphasizes that it was God who called Paul and his company to preach and share the gospel. The vision was a vision from God. It was God who called them to come in order to preach. The first point is teamwork. I wonder if we do realize that when we have a whole choir singing on this stage, and one or two of the members of the choir would sing a rather different tune, the, the choir would be disorganized that way. Or how much value is there in the teamwork in a sports group? You see, it is very important that we have teamwork in sports. We increase cooperation, 
Each one understand the responsibility. They are encouraged and they support one another as teammates. And then there becomes some kind of a, a bonding and re, a reliance on each other. In the work of the ministry, we must have the same. One principle that I learned as I study these words is that preaching the gospel is a partnership between God and us. Preaching the gospel is God's work, and we can only do it if we are in God's team. You see, this is the same truth that's being stated in other passages of Scripture. For example, in John 20, 21, it says, As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. 1 Corinthians 3, 9 says, And we are God's fellow workers. Beloved, what are the implications? Number one, we do not do God's work our own way. We should be careful how to do it, and it is done, and it must be done according to the standard and expectations of God. Number two, preaching and sharing the gospel of the Lord is the greatest that we can do here on earth. We are doing the work of God. In reality, God doesn't need any one of us for his work. Yet, he chooses us to be part of his team. As I contemplate on my coming retirement from the ministry of EE next year, being my 40th <clears throat> continuous year of ministry, I was asking the Lord, Lord, what one word should I thank you for? And the word opportunity is number one on the list. I thank God for the opportunity to serve him when I was young and to give the best years of my life up to where I am today. Are you in God's team? Oh, you may say, well, pastor, I am a member of UECP. Let me clarify first. One has to be a member of God's family first by personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. We need to transfer our trust, not in religion, not in denomination, not being a member of the church. In my own life, I grew up in a Protestant church, but it was only on my 18th year that I finally opened my life to the Lord Jesus Christ and submitted this life for his control. Letter B, teamwork between God and us, but also teamwork between God's people as fellow workers. You see, the, the vision was received only by the Apostle Paul, but eventually it involved his companions. Now, if you look at your Bibles, <clears throat> there is the, the word we, pronoun we, mentioned in verse 10. Now, who were the we? Or who were included in the we? It included Luke, the writer of Acts, Silas, and Timothy. So preaching the gospel, we can see, is 
a cooperative effort of God's people. We not only work together with God, but we also work together with each other. 1 Corinthians 3.9, as I mentioned earlier, further emphasizes the truth by declaring that we are God's fellow workers. And what are the implications? Number one, each of us has a unique role to play in the ministry. You are comfortably seated in probably the best upuan in the church in the world right now. But you have a role to play in the ministry. We value each other's contribution and role. No single individual can claim credit for the success of any spiritual mission. By the grace of God, we have covered almost the whole of the Philippines, but I cannot grab the credit because it was the work of God and because God sent people to work with me for many years. The harvest belongs both to the sower as much as to the reaper. You could be prayer partners. In EE, we have what we call, uh, if you are not the trainer, the, not the trainee, then you must have two prayer partners each. Then there are those who are what we call resource providers. Then we have what we call social media influencers. And then there are people from the church that gives names of people to be prayed for, and then a team will come and share the gospel with them. God's design that each of us will have to get involved. I miss the old ladies' fellowship whom they refer to as the EE fellowship here. I have not met them for over maybe three years, and I was looking for them. Uh, Reverend Willie Cheng said, oh, you may not meet them because it's only the English service that's, that's meeting face to face. But I value them because they pray, they go out, they share the gospel, they make disciples. Number two implication. We do not develop a sense of competition between fellow workers now and also with predecessors and successors. Each of us, if you have known Jesus in your lives, has an assigned task from him. And we are all part of each other's labor. Again, the question comes, are you part of the team already? If you are not yet, please don't remain a spectator. The second thing, the second main thing in our study today is, aside from teamwork, target area, verses 6 to 10. Verses 6 to 10. <clears throat> verses 6 to 10 focuses on the geographical movements of Paul and Silas. And this covers the whole of Asia Minor. Well, I used to have a map on my PowerPoint, but I had it removed because you probably wouldn't be able to read. The letters are very small. In verse 6, now this will be very, very quick. Allow me to go through some five verses, but I'll, I'll do it very quickly. In verse 6, they were kept by the Spirit from preaching the word in Asia. In verse 7, the spirit of Jesus would not allow them to enter Bithynia. In verse 8, they passed by Mysia and then they entered Troas. 
In verse 9, in Troas, Paul received a vision to go to Macedonia. Verse 10, from Troas, Paul and company responded to the vision of the Macedonian call in obedience to God. UECP here is not the only UECP church that I know because I travel all over the country. And the Lord had given me an opportunity to minister to some of the UECP branches in the country. You see, one thing that I noticed about where they are planted and positioned is that UECP is strategically located in key cities and provinces in the whole of the Philippines. And I was thinking last night, Lord, this must have been submitted to you in so much prayer. And it has been planned well. Congratulations, because you are reaching the whole Chinese community in the Philippines by the work that you have planted a few years back. Now, God puts us in a certain place at a certain time for a certain purpose. When I go to Makati from Pasig, where I live, sometimes I pass by that, uh, that road along Forbes Park, just wonder at, at the huge houses. One time I said, Lord, why am I not living in Forbes Park? I'm living in the poorest park of Pasig. Well, the Lord would gently remind and say, Bernard, I placed you in Pasig because you have a role to play in reaching your community with the gospel. You are where you are right now because God has placed you there. But have you asked the Lord, Lord, what is my role? Geography matters to God. And these changes of location on Paul's life was not haphazard, but they were, they were directed by God. Paul's life was marked by a series of divinely guided movements. And as believers, as Christians, we need to learn this principle. We do not exist in this world by our own will, and for our own purpose. God puts us where we are for his purpose. If God allowed you to, to stay in Tundo, then so be faithful where God has planted you. Begin praying for your neighbors and your community. Beloved, another question where is your personal Macedonia? Where is you, Isipis Macedonia? Is it your family? Your own Jerusalem? Your parents, siblings, office mates? Where is your Macedonia? Let there be God opens and closes doors. Paul, twice Paul and company were forbidden. They were stopped to enter certain places because God had another plan. You see, this is a double prohibition, and, but it was followed by a, one affirmation through a vision. You don't go there, you don't go there, but you go to Macedonia. God's guidance, beloved, <clears throat> includes both negative and positive circumstances. You've heard of the name David Livingstone. He tried to go to China, but God sent him to Africa instead. You heard of the name William Carey? He planned to Polynesia, 
But God guided him to India. Hudson Taylor went to India first and then to Burma or Myanmar. Beloved, you may have plans. You have pre prepared for it. You have prayed for it. But should the Lord put a stop, do not be prostrated with closed opportunities. We must learn to trust and rejoice in God, both for His restraints and His constraints. When some doors are closed, others are opened. When the Lord puts a stop, He may have other plans. The steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord. Let me add a little bit. The steps and the stops of the good man are ordered by the Lord. Is God opening a door for you in your community, in your neighborhood, in your offices, in your classrooms? Are you responding as Paul and his team did? If there is somebody that irritates you, for example, with the way that this person behaves, what is the first step? You go to the Lord in prayer. It might be that the Lord is going to use you to change him rather than be bitter against the Lord about the situation. Have you been in prayer, for example, for a specific loved one, a fellow worker? Should the Lord open the way? Is there a potential location, for example, where you're planning to hold your first tenth Bible study or discipleship class? The third main thing today <clears throat> Teamwork, what's the next? Target area, the next? Trustful obedience. Is the sermon very long already? I can stop here and come back next Sunday. Okay, I still have about 10 minutes. Trustful obedience. The furtherance of the gospel in Macedonia reveals Paul and his team's trust in the sovereignty of God, which includes the following, and there will be five short points. I'll make it quick. Are you ready? I know you want to go home already. Number one, Paul and his team preached the gospel, and it was God who convicted the hearts in verse 14, for example, it mentioned the name of a lady by the name of Lydia. The Lord opened Lydia's heart to respond to Paul's message. So it was the Lord that opened the heart of the lady. The saving initiative comes from God. Paul was sharing, but God was working through it. And I have heard thousands of testimonies of people, of thousands of people that we have trained, ordinary members of the church who would rather be shy, doesn't talk. But when they were trained how to share the gospel, they were even amazed that people will listen to them and respond positively to the gospel. One lesson here, beloved, is this. If you speak... In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God will bring conviction to the heart. We plant the seed, God makes it grow. I have seen it all these years. Have the truth of the gospel captivated our hearts that we can stop talking about it? Are we witnessing by and through the power of the Holy Spirit? Second of the five, they preached the gospel, God protected them. Now, if you have time later today, 
Please read again Acts chapter 16 up to verse 34. You see, here they went in the name of Christ. But there was a demon-possessed girl and stopped the evangelistic work. Okay, the Lord healed the demon-possessed and the Lord stopped the evangelistic work of Satan. Wow. May E.E. si Satan. In verse 17, the demon was engaged in evangelism. Surprising, huh? He was telling the truth about God, but sometimes the demon speaks the truth, but it is for evil purposes. To draw people to believe him or to discredit the gospel by associating it with the occult. In verse 18, Paul was troubled, rebuked the demon, and the evil spirit left her. Our ministry of preaching souls for Jesus, just a reminder, is a spiritual warfare. We are always confronted by the wiles of the adversary. And therefore, we need God's wisdom to safeguard his work from evil. Third of the five, they preached the gospel. God allowed persecution. Verse 25. Listen. There was persecution when they obeyed the Lord. Verse 19 says, Paul and Silas were seized and dragged to the marketplace. They were brought to magistrates. Verse 22 to 24, they were attacked, they were stripped, they were beaten, severely plugged, and then they were finally thrown into prison. But listen to verse 25. In the midst of all the persecution and suffering, at about midnight, while in prison, <clears throat> Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Beloved, we, you and I, can be happy in the midst of difficulties. Amen? God allowed the persecution to take place for the furtherance of the gospel. Obedience to the call of God could mean persecution and hardships. But we can rejoice in the fact that he is going to be with us and he will see us through. That is more than enough to make us rejoice. Number four, out of five, they preached the gospel. God took control. Verses 26 to 28. God shook the earth and threw a violent earthquake. Nature is under the control of God. And the earthquake shook the prison cell. And what happened? And all the prison doors were opened. And everybody's chains came loose. In the Philippines, when there is a breakout and there would be cases of earthquakes, the prisoners would escape just like the prisoners here. And then the prison guards will be promoted to become colonel. Beloved, Paul and Silas remained calm. They did not panic. They just entrusted the whole situation to the sovereign and mysterious ways of God. Lesson, God is in control of everything. God is not bound by nature or time or prison cell or chains or even pandemics or lockdowns. And then last of the five, they preached the gospel. God granted a gift of faith and repentance, verse 29 to 33. Wow, when the jailer saw what happened, all others escaped except Paul and his team. 
the jailer realized the most important question. And he asked this question, what must I do to be saved? Beloved, I have heard the same question through various means of expressions. How can I have the Jesus that you have? What must I do to be saved? In verse 32, the jailer heard the most important message for the whole world to hear. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the message we have to carry. In verse 33 and 34, the jailer experienced the most wonderful life to live. The Bible expressed it this way. And the jailer was filled with joy. He was filled with joy only after he received the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Your life and my life must be filled with joy, but only after Jesus has come into our life. As we end today's message, if we want the lost rich with the gospel, it requires teamwork, it requires target area. We need to be specific on, Lord, these are my neighbors, I want to reach them. And we need to step out in faith, in trustful obedience. This is the culmination of your missions month. I appreciate Pastor Brian's prayer earlier. But how can we be involved as he specified it? Number one, we can all pray to the same living God who hears and listens to us. Pray for your friends, your loved ones, your community. EE is one of the beneficiaries of the rich blessings from your giving. And we are able to train more pastors, give scholarships, travel all over the country to remote places because the UECP Missions Board supports us regularly with the gift. Please pray and ask the Lord. Lord, I, I, I want to be involved. I want to share. And then lastly, Lord, I want to step out in trustful obedience. Please open the door for me. I want to serve you. Father, thank you for your word today. Bless it for your glory and honor in the hearts and in the lives of your people here. Thank you for this church. Thank you for her existence. Thank you for many who have already come and have been discipled and are now serving in the mission field because of the outreach of the United Evangelical Church of the Philippines. We love you, dear Lord. Allow us now to go home and serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Neighborhood Ministry, or UNM, is an outreach of UECP. It started when UECP saw the need to reach out and share the gospel to our neighboring community, particularly the ones living at the Estero at the back of our church. After a community survey, UNM Manila was born. UNM Santa Ana, UNM Canumay East, then UNM Las Piñas followed. Our mission is to unite people to Christ, nurture them in His words, and to make disciples to make disciples from our neighboring communities. We envision them obeying the Great Commission for God's glory. Circle of Life is our theme for this year, following what Paul says in Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 to 20. For in Him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through Him to reconcile to Himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven 
making peace by the blood of his cross. We thank the Lord for sustaining us throughout the pandemic, for the strong commitment of gifted volunteer leaders, as well as the faithful members, for UECP Mission Board, for extending their assistance to all four outreaches during these times of difficulty. Share a Grain is a project wherein a sack of rice is given to every family in the UNM outreaches. 350 families receive these timely gifts from UECP. Praise God! UNM Santa Ana was also blessed with a multi-purpose room and a steel gate was newly installed. We thank God for technology that we used during the pandemic for our Bible studies, children classes, discipleship groups, as well as celebrating our church anniversaries and Christmas Thanksgiving. And we thank God now that we can gather physically for our Sunday worship and other ministries implementing health protocols. Last January, there was a fire along the Sonesteros, affecting barangays 260 and 313. But it was amazing how God protected the home of one of our church members. Although the second floor was consumed by fire, the ground floor where they usually sleep was spared. UECP extended their help not only to our church members, but to 131 families who suffered the sad calamity. Pray with us as we continue reaching out for neighboring communities for God's glory and honor. For some who are emotionally battered by anxieties and distress brought about by the pandemic, for face-to-face -face ministries adjustments, for good health, wisdom, and guidance from the Lord for the pastoral team, church leaders, our ongoing discipleship ministries, for children classes, teachers, and students. Trusting God's promises and His words to be true gives us hope and resilience. In spite of other challenges, we see God's hands at work in our ministry. His faithfulness never comes to an end. Let us be faithful and sincere in our calling for God. Thank you and God bless. Before we proceed to our response song, let us spend two minutes to pause and pray for the message that we heard, the missionary report that we just listened to in the outreaches. Um, so the prayer request will be flashed. Uh, first, let's pray for, uh, for God to grant open doors of opportunity to share the gospel and that God would help them to continually walk in love like Christ and walk by faith in His Word. And lastly, for provision for their needs and protection for them and their family as they reach out to their communities. Let us take this time to pray. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we come together in prayer as one team, as one church, tapping into your great power because we know that no pandemic and no crisis can restrict you and your gift of salvation. Lord, you are sovereign and in control always. And in this, we pray that you would grant our missionaries open doors to share the gospel wherever you have placed them. Help them obediently trust you as they continue to walk with you and enable the missionaries to find joy and satisfaction as they depend on your provisions and protection. All this we ask in your name. Amen.
Let's continue to worship our God and sing songs of worship. Praise God for the wonderful song response. 
And praise God also for the wonderful message that we received this morning led by Reverend Bernard Henson. And speaking of the unrestricted gospel, as we all know that gospel is a good news, right now we have also another good news that we're about to announce. After two years, we will have a joint worship service again. And once again, we are witnessing the 93 years of God's faithfulness to our church. Through these 93 years, we have witnessed His sovereign hand guiding us in the midst of trials, abrupt changes, and growth. So come and worship with us face to face on July 10 at 8.30 in the morning for our 93rd anniversary joint worship service. As we celebrate this milestone, let's also pray that we will continue to obey Christ as we serve him in different ministries and lead the way for the succeeding generations to follow. Another important announcement. Three weeks from now, starting on July 17, 2022, we will have a new worship service schedule. First, we have the Amoy service will be at 8.30 in the morning here in our main sanctuary. Then we also have the Mandarin service will be at 10 in the morning at the lower chapel. And finally, we also have the English worship service will be at 10.30 in the morning here in main sanctuary. There will still be a live broadcast for all services and can be viewed on YouTube via UEC Philippines channel. Shall we ask Reverend Brian Kimball C. to give us the benediction? I was 16, by the way, when Pastor Henson came to, for our, our youth, very first youth Tiki clinic, and that was the first time I had the boldness to share God's word. So thank you, Pastor Henson. Let us all rise to receive the benediction. May the love of God, our Heavenly Father, the fellowship of the Spirit, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us as we face the unfinished task of preaching your word to the world. Amen and Amen. UECP, let us now go to the world and love like Jesus compassionately, practically, and sacrificially. Let us also proclaim that no other name has the power to save than Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus.
Jesus Christ the Lord. We go to all the world. We go to all the world. His kingdom open first. The world in name is bound to sing, but Jesus Christ the Lord. Please be seated. envelopes provided in the pews and drop them in the offering boxes located outside of the sanctuary near the door entrances or exit points. And now, to all who are 70 years and above, you may exit to the side door on your left and take the elevator down. Make sure that you wear your mask properly and observe social distancing at all times. All 70 years and above. Thank you, and see you next Sunday. And now to the rest of our members, you may all now rise and exit in an orderly manner at this side. Thank you and see you next Sunday. <laughs>